Welcome back to Naruto Re Anime Re Review Part 2. This one is discussing the Land of Waves are covering episodes 6 through 19. Yeah, that's where the portion of Land of Waves starts. Yep. Now, in case you're curious though about what chapters of the Naruto manga does this particular, do the first 19 episodes cover, they cover the first, like, 32 chapters. Yep, the first 32 chapters. Though I think they might slim down for the next arc of the series. Though the tuning exam is actually quite long, quite lengthy. That one I'm going to do in multiple parts. Yes, the tuning exam, do it in multiple parts because how freaking long it is. Yeah. Now, this arc has a debut about four characters, per se, who still do come back in a way after this, but not really. We have the debut of Zabuza, the Demon of the Mist, and his sword, the Execution Splite, that was not called that here. Nope, the name of the sword is not revealed to ship it in, but yeah, it's the Executioner's Blade. It's this big, long blade that's got this moon couple holes in it. Yeah, the blade itself is basically... Think of it as basically how tall my ceiling is. And basically the handle is basically... Uh, starts where my desk is. That's how long the damn blade is. And it's got a long handle... And Zabuza, if he puts into a tree, he can stand on the blade without breaking, because he's that freaking thin. Also, he goes with a couple different outfit changes. First time you see him, he is shirtless. Then he's got the same type of sleeves that Sasuke has. Okay, the story of how... Oh yeah, there's also the debut of Haku, his weapon. Who... <laughs> this is quite strange of this character. This character is very feminine. How? It has the face of a woman, despite the fact of having a body of a guy. Yep, when Naruto first sees him, he thinks that he is a she. Because of the appearance. That's just the way Haku is, apparently. He's one of, like, two characters I've seen in the series where it looks like it's a guy, looks like a girl, but it's actually a guy. But at least they don't dress like women. Not really, no. Okay, the arc starts off where... First, you have Team 7 accomplishing a D mission, retrieving a lost cat. And of course, well, there's some other missions they want to, they want to try out. And Naruto's like, can't you give us a more serious mission? And surprisingly, Sasuke actually agrees with Naruto. Yeah, one of the rare times he does during the first half of the series. Well, even he agrees. Th this whole thing of catching cats, this is not a good test of their skills. Especially that Sasuke was the best student in the, of the group. So they quest a slightly harder mission. And, okay, fine. So, you guys be bodyguards for... Well, basically you'd be on escort mission. Escorting a... A guy who's sort of a drunk. He's basically a bridge builder back to his home. Simple as that. Yep. And this is as the first time we see the... One of the gates that, well, Naruto go out, that we see Naruto and the gang go out whenever they go on missions. This, now, they use various different gates in the series. Yeah, there's basically gates on all four corners of the village. I think this is the south gate, I think it is. is one of the most frequent gates used in the series. Yep. And a lot of the time, these gates at night are closed. But during the daytime, these gates are open. Yeah, that's what, how I know this, because I've watched the series. That's how I know that. These gates are tallest skyscrapers. They're taller than the actual on the buildings in the Hidden Leaf Village. So, basically, the five of them go out and they get to the village, and then they're attacked by a couple of hidden Mishinobi. Yep, first time again. Yeah, you get sort of, and of course, they beat them pretty easily. And they also explain basically a little bit more of the world of Naruto, where they explain the other nations. The village hit. Basically, they have. The first mentionings of the sand, stone, mist, and the cloud village. Of all these villages, the sand village is actually, well, they make an appearance in the very next arc of the series. The tuning exam. The other villages don't, surprisingly. I think they do, but they don't do very much of them. You don't see some of these villages, like in the case of 
let's say, the Hidden Sand Village. A lot of these villages don't even see. I mean, the Sand Village and I would say the Cloud Village are not seen until Naruto Shippuden. Here's a strange thing about the Hidden Mist, surprisingly, about this particular place. With the exception of flashbacks in present day, the place is never shown in present day until Baruto. Yes, that is the first time the Hidden Mist village is actually seen. And here's the by just something by sheer coincidence. That's also the first time we've seen the Hidden Stone Village. Yep. Yeah, that's something quite strange though. Out of the five villages, I mean, obviously the most frequent one shown in the series for the whole franchise is a hidden leaf. Fine, whatever. And they also show the hidden sand village, which they show that in the very next series, in the very next series. Shippuden. As a matter of fact, I seen the very first. I uh, think it's seen like in the opening, in the very first arc of Shippuden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't really see like the main place where the Kazakaki lives. Yeah, and they do explain that who the other. Kakes are. There is the Razakaki, the Kazakaki, the Tazakaki, and of course the Hokage, the five Kage. And they're basically the primary leaders. And basically the, the villagers basically are on their own in the way. They're basically kind of self financed, so they're supported by the Damio. Yes, they're supported by him. And he kind of gets approval basically who leads the village. As for how the village does its own thing, the Damio does not interfere with the affairs of the village. Yeah, they'll explain the Daimyo stuff until a little bit later on in the series. Yeah, and they don't have Daimyo show up until a little bit later. Yep, and they explain it's just after Hidden Mist. The Hidden Mist symbol, believe it or not, is some squiggly lines on their ninja plate, on their the ninja headband. The Hidden Leaf is basically a big swirl with a leaf on it. The swirl itself, believe it or not, which is seen frequently on the sleeves and on the backs of all the hidden leaf like ninja that is actually not explained of what that is until ship it in when naruto goes to some special training in the series yeah he goes to train between the series but that's when they explain what the swirl means and why the hidden leaf wear the symbol yeah, there's a big purpose. I won't explain it here, but I will explain it later on when I discuss the arc that discusses the the actual swirl itself. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's kind of the symbol of the Hidden Leaf Village. And I will explain later what the other, like, they do show the other ones, like other ninja villages with their own ninja headbands. I will explain exactly wh what they look like when I discuss the training exam arc, because they show a little bit more of the villages. So... They walk along the road, and of course, it turns out that Tabuza, the the bridge builder, turns out he misled the village. He did not want to hire more security because the, the, his village couldn't afford it. Also, the reason why he hired protection was because of a local shipping magnet, Gatso. Oh boy, this guy. By the way, this guy, fun fact about this guy, he is the only person I've seen in the entire series who looks, looks like he wears regular shoes that cover their entire feet. Because, like, every single character who's in this series, like, especially characters who are not ninja, wear these special boots that show off their toes. Yeah, that's probably something that's probably keen to ninjas, fine. But ninjas I've seen in other series, uh, they don't really show sell their shows, let their toes... Unless they're wearing the special sandals. But he's the only one who looks like he wears like normal business clothes. Yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. Especially as you have like the... Like some of the characters wear like sandals or flip-flops. But but in the case of like regular shoes, nobody bother does. Unless of course it's cold, which they very rarely show snow in the series. Which I'll discuss that when it's got shipping it. So, you see the bridge. It's not completed yet. It's still in construction. Yeah, I think he's about halfway done with it, but... So, they get home, and they see his daughter. Very beautiful woman, mind you. Yep. And they introduce his grand his grandson, who is actually voiced by... Well, before they get to the village, they're attacked by... Zabuza. And Hawk... Well, Taku is not named here, but he's named a little later. Yep. And they briefly fight, and at one point Kakashi and hostage, the Naruto and Sasuke with ingenious plan to free Kakashi by having Naruto transform into the demon Shuriken. Yep. 
and they free him, and it then looks like they're about to kill him, and then needles get thrown into his neck by Haku. Yep. Though Haku's wearing a mask, or this this particular mask that's worn by the Amu Black Ops or the Infernal Squad, basically Amu Black Ops. But he's not with Amu Black Ops. Oh no, he's not with them at all. He has nothing to do with them. He just wears the mask because he likes it. And plus, he has Ninja Handband Ray underneath it. Though he hides it from Naruto when he sees him later. He also mentions that when he wakes up his hours later, he says. He says this line that sounds kind of creepy, like, I didn't want to ruin that perfect body of yours, and I know you you actually would get mad if I did that. And Zabuza probably is has the expression of, like, yeah, I would probably say that. <laughs> yep. And the thing is, Haku is obsessed with him. Oh my gosh. They explain his relationship with him is quite strange, to say the least. Though next time you see um. Right after this, he's actually in bed. Though Gatsu shows up and he tries to eliminate Zabuza, but he's stopped by Haku, and Haku, Haku of course breaks his arm. Then of course, like right after that, he is a scene again until like the final episode of the arc. They get, and of course, they after they meet the grandson. By the way, the grandson now Zabuza forgot to mention he's voiced by Steve Bloom. Yes, one of two characters he voiced in the series. He does voice another character series who's much more bigger character than Sabuzo. Yeah. I'll explain him when I discuss the shooting exam. And by the way, I think Steve Bloom is having so much fun voicing Sabuzo. Though, I know the, the guy's favorite character's voice is, is Spike from Cowboy Bebop. But here's the interesting question. I'm not, I don't know if anybody's ever asked this. Who does he like voicing better? Sabuzo or the other guy? I'll discuss the guy's name when I discuss the tuning exam and how crazy this guy is and how obsessed, how creepy he is. Yep. So, a lot of the time this arc basically because they, they figure out Zabba's is alive, so begins the training. We get the first time, well, Zabba does, does something that basically that the characters will do after this. Walk on water. Yep, walk on water. And apparently, according to Kakashi, he has never seen this before, despite the fact he's later seen doing this in the first arc of Shepparton. And, by the way, Naruto has taught this later during the tuning exam arc. Yep. So, basically, him, Sasuke, and Sakura are taught to use chakra to walk up a tree, basically to help strengthen the chakra and have a rematch against Zabuza. That's what they do for pretty much this whole arc. And because and here's the thing, Sakura completed her training early because she completed it pretty quickly. So her job is basically continue bodyguarding Zetsu. Yep, continue bodyguarding him. He has no problem with it at all. And he probably thinking, man, it's so nice to have a pretty girl watch me. <laughs> Despite the fact that Sakura is 12. Yes, Sakura is supposed to be 12 years old and Naruto's got a crush on her. And like I said before in part one, it goes nowhere. Yep, aside from the fact he kind of likes Sakura, it's a relationship that does not progress in the progression in a way that fans wanted it to, especially since this relationship would never work at all. I mean, Naruto and Sakura. Yeah, there are fans who apparently don't like the fact he ended up with Hinata, so they pretty much created a fan-created child of Naruto and Sakura because Sakura ends up with Sasuke. I know I'm spoiling the end of the series, but that's the way it is in Baruto. So, and I'm on the side of the creator of the series of who he chose to have Naruto end up with. Though Inada is not in this art, surprisingly. I wouldn't be su now, I've heard rumbling. There's going to be a live action adaption of the series. I wouldn't be surprised if he went Hanada in this arc. I would not be surprised by it at all. So, after Naruto and Sasuke basically complete their training, like, Sa Sa Sasuke completes it's not much a problem. Naruto does kind of complete it in a way, though he also gets more training in, though he ends up basically more training overnight, and he ends up falling asleep on the ground. And then he meets Haku on math. He doesn't know this is Haku. It's just some guy with a pretty face. Yeah, and of course he acts kind of nervously around him because he thinks he's a woman. And he says, oh, by the way, I'm a boy. He's like, what? He's like, he's like, he's prettier than Sakura. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, he seriously said that in the series. Though he's voiced by a woman. Still, by the way. Yes, after all this time. Yeah, 15 years basically voicing this. Where he's voiced by the same woman. <laughs> yeah. So. Then once the, the. Of course, he got the completion. He took kind of a day off, but. Every else, they go to the bridge to continue bodyguarding the bridge builder. And then, of course, Naruto basically thinks he overslept. But don't worry, you gave him a day off. So he goes out. And then, of course, not long after he leaves, then he spots a wild boar and some trees cut up by swords. And a couple of the goon, a couple of guess his goon shows up. Lucky enough that Naruto shows up to beat them up, though they briefly took um, the bridge builder's daughter hostage. So Naruto would free, free her and beat up the goons, and he races the bridge. And while that's going on, Zabuza shows up again to attack the bridge builder. The bridge itself is almost completed. By, and, of course, during the period of time when, when Sakura's watching him, one of the builders decided to sort of turn against him by quitting. And he says, he says him, don't bark, I'm back to work. Yeah, that's what he tells him. So, it's not long after this that Zabuza shows up. We have a big brawl with him. Like, we have Kakashi fighting him, and, of course... You have Haku face off against Sasuke. That's when Naruto shows up. And it's like, about time he showed up, though he was to save. And then, of course, Haku, and, well, he tries, of course, Zappa's trying to interfere, but Haku says, uh, don't worry about this. I'll take care of it. Um, let, let me take care of this. And Zappa's like, fine. I'll take care of Kakashi. Yeah, Kakashi, he knows all about Kakashi. Kakashi has the first time ever seen the series a sharing guy. He's not the only one who has it, by the way. Yeah, even Sasuke was surprised at the fact he has one. Then as later shown, he's got a Sharingan too. Though his basically is a little different than... His is not complete. Usually when you see a completed one, usually it's like the, the pupil plus three little drops and thing being red. His has got two drops in it. Yep. Sodoros currently right now hasn't improved yet. But hers are basically just the pupil plus one, one drop. Yeah, Sasuke at this point it's got two, but if it has three, it can actually spin and later on become like form a particular powerful jutsu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plus they explain that well, the Shuriken can allow you to copy other people. Yes, copy other people. It's a Shio clan thing. Now, in case you look curious though, like where did Kakashi get the Shuriken eye? That's why like not being part of the Shio clan. They don't explain that until a, well, they don't actually explain about the eye until like a flashback story that happens during the events of Shippuden. That's when they finally explain where he got the eye from. He has the eye for almost the entirety of the series up until the final season of Shippuden. Well, the second to last season, mind you, but last season of the canon that happens in the manga. Yeah, that's when he loses the eye and gets his natural eye restored. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, at one point, he's blinded by Zabuza in the mist. Then he's like, okay, I'll just basically summon my ninja hat. And he's like, he's basically forms a, a he forms a jutsu. A summoning jutsu. Summoning all of his dogs. Yes, the first time we see a summoning jutsu in the series. By the way, not the last time we see him summoning dogs in the series. He would do this also in... He will do this in the shooting exam, mind you, but he will do this in... The last canon arc of the series. Yep. Yeah, he does this several times in the whole series. Yeah, apparently he likes using dogs. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's later seen these dogs all have got ninja headbands. All got the Hidden League ninja headbands on them. Which sounds so cool. Yeah, but a dog? Really? But he's not the only one. They've also seen the series. Say people could have these summon contracts. Explain a little bit, a little bit later. Where... Well, one of the characters shows up like later on in the series. Like they can use slugs, snakes, toads. One of the characters have an actual weasel. Yep, an actual weasel, which she later stopped using. By the way, I won't. I it's never really explained why. But yeah, summoning jutsu. Summoning jutsu is. This is the first time I've seen this series. Yeah, I get a few first this one. Yep, and. 
Well, when first Haku first fights Sasuke, he chops him his ice mirror prison, which has some holes in it. And somehow Naruto is able to squeeze right through, no problem. And, and then Sasuke and Kakashi are like, he's supposed to sneak up on your enemies, not your allies, which is so hilarious. And of course, they try to escape from it, but they get pinned by a bunch of needles. And after Sasuke got hit by so many needles. Naruto does something, this is the first of three times he does in, the, in this particular series. He does a few times more in Chippenden, where he goes freaking nuts. And Kakashi figures though, wait, has the seal been broken? No, I think it's been loosened, but it's not been broken. And he kind of basically, is, his hair is like going a little bit longer. His feet, he gets nails with like actual claws. He forms fangs. He destroys the ice prison and attacks Haku. And then he tells Haku, because he's basically a Jew's been defeated. He also explains about Haku's backstory. And the fact that his Kenki Genkai, that's what he explains also Shuriken is. It's something that you're born with, and it cannot be copied with a Shuriken. Yeah, apparently he was also the, believe it or not, it's later revealed he was the last of his clan to have this particular Jutsu. Yeah, he was the last one. I don't know what happens to the rest. Apparently, it was explained that after war... Apparently, people were afraid of people who have this particular jutsu, so they just killed them all. Despite the fact this is a freezing jutsu. Yes, a freezing jutsu. Yeah, by the way, fun fact, they actually have a character who shows up in the Kakashi like novel who's got the same power as Haku, and she's part of the same clan too. I think they, they imply in the series that Haku might be the last one, but she's another one that uses the freezing jutsu. And Kakashi debuts his his only ajutsu he hasn't copied. Just he doesn't call it this yet, but it's the debut of the Chidori. Yep, his only known jutsu. And he's about to use it on Kakashi, who's basically pinned down by the ninja hounds. One of whom is a big one who's basically biting his shoulder. Like one's biting his leg, biting his arms. He's about to hit it, and then Haku steps in and gets hit with the same move. By the way, not the first this has happened to Kakashi where someone has stepped in front of his particular blast where he's trying to kill an enemy. Though last time it actually drove him crazy, believe it or not. Yeah, he nearly contemplated suicide over this and meant, it messed up his head. Yeah, this he actually had to a friend of his that he thought he actually killed her, but she actually was committing suicide because she had something inside of her that didn't want to get out. I'll explain more about that later on and who this character is. And by the way, she's got the same voice actors as Hanada. Yep, same one, Stephanie Steve. I'll explain more about her later. So, Haku dies in Kakashi's arms. And then, like, not long after that, then Gonzo shows up after, after basically Zabuza's, and of course, Zabuza's miss has been basically removed. Sasuke, of course, is tended to by Sakura. And of course, meanwhile, the bridge brothers grand is trying to rally out the village. Though, after he tries to go by himself, they're like, yeah, we'll go too. Though this mention off screen. And of course, Gabu Getsu shows up. And then of course, because since Zabuza can't use his arms, he says, boy, give me your kunai. He's like, okay, fine. He throws up his kunai, he catches with his teeth, and proceeds to take out a lot of, Ga of G Gabuza's goons, and takes out the main villain himself. You might think it's Zabuza, but he really just a lackey. So he takes him out because he got fired, so he had no choice but to kill him. He, he, is, he even points out, though, I no longer work with him, so we no longer have a grudge. Akashi's like, I agree. We have no more gripe for each other. So after he dies, and of course Zabuza collapses, but he's still alive. And then Ka he gives Kashi one last request. Can you take me to him? And of course he lays him right next to him. And then Zabuza and Haku both die. And it's implied they're taken back to the Hidden Mist. Though it could be just some nearby village. Because it's not really the village hidden in the mist. Because that's not what the village looks like. It's just some other village. that just has to be nearby the village hidden in the mist. And they're both buried there. Yep, and they stay buried there until the fourth Great Ninja War. Yep, that's when they come back. That was one of the most shocking things seen in the series of when he gets revived, him and Haku. Yeah, it is jaw-dropping of how they come back. Gatsu doesn't return after this, 
Now, Zappos himself would frequently even mention after. He, he would mention several times after this. He shows him in flashback. Even though he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. The bench build himself, he would definitely return for Shepardin. Both him and his grandson. Not his, daughter, not his beautiful daughter, surprisingly. But his grandson, who apparently is to come like a bridge build, could become a build like he is. Yep. And with the bridge completed, and after Naruto and everyone else leave, and of course Naruto tells uh, Zabo so they convince him to, to basically attack his former employer. Tells him about Haku, how much he really cared about him. He also mentioned he really liked them, and in fact he considers them very precious to him. And he sort of breaks down in tears, and he figures out that... Yeah, he felt the same way too. So that's when he that's what convinces him to take out the shipping magnet and some of his goons. Not all of them, surprisingly. Because before they actually like, who's gonna pay us? And then the village shows up and then of course Naruto summons his <laughs> his Shoko Jutsu. And of course Kakashi's like, Okay, I got a little bit of chocolate left and he goes, Shoko Jutsu Kakashi still he's got a lot of Kakashi clothes. I thought that was so funny. In fact, this live of Kakashi shower clothes. Yeah, he actually can do the shower clone jutsu. Mainly because he's holding Naruto to do it. Yep. And it was like, nah, we're gonna leave because we, we we're we're outnumbered. And these guys, believe it or not, will actually show up again in a in the episode with the bring back the bridge builder. Where it's real what happened with the group after they left the the this particular village yeah and the and the bridge gets a name the great naruto bridge yep that's what they call the damn thing and the bridge itself would not appear again in the series until shippuden when sasuke goes back to by himself without the group i will explain more about that when i get the shippuden but that's the next time you see the bridge interesting name and of course everyone's like like everyone's like so happy and Kakashi's like, let's do it. And of course, he wants to do it again. He's like, we're not doing that again. And, well, as in the case of big missions like this in this series, well, nope. They won't do a big mission like this again. Where they go all out like this. I would say next time they do this, basically, an official mission where they're hired, do this like this. They usually do this in the last official canon arc of this series. And they, and they do a couple more times after this. They'll do more and ship it in, where there's a lot more big action stuff in there. This series, there's some action, not a lot. Usually it's like very small scale in this series. I would say it's big as basically what happened in this arc. It wouldn't happen to the Sasuke Retrieval, which I was discussing that when I get up to it, which I have a whole DVD that collects the entire thing of it. Yep. But in the case of this arc, it's really good. Pretty good arc. Debut some stuff that would be explained later on. The way they explain the Shuragon is. Not entirely accurate. They would change the the basis of the Shuragon later. Yeah, the explanation would change later about the Shuragon with what with its actual like definition, what it is. But yeah, good set of episodes. Now, part three, we discuss the first round of the tuning exam, and there'll be several videos about this. I think about four overall just to cover the tuning exam because of how really really long the arc is. Yep. The next couple arcs come one. Right after the shooting exam. Yeah, believe it or not, shooting exam itself, if I can get to the thing, move here. Okay. Next arc after this one, basically, next two arcs. The tuning exams go from episodes 20 to 67, and the other that comes right after that is only about 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. But the third arc of the series, the first really epic arc of the series, like that big, and they won't go that big against the main arc. We'll discuss more about that when I discuss Konoha Crush, which is the third arc of the series, which tuning exams help set up that. But the tuning exams itself are exactly. I think it's like 48 episodes. Yeah, it's quite long for an actual arc of the series. Yeah, and the first arc, 33 chapters. Yeah, but not much to say about this arc. Really good. Can we discuss tuning exam? Where they give you a lot of stuff that's still being used this very day. Okay, so that's it for the of you. My next view will be a comic corner. And after that will be a 
Well, I think next one after that will be review for ReZero, and that'll probably be it today, okay? Peace out for video. Bye.